Well, you know, the ebb and flow of the game is no different than the week before. Like, you go out and we understand how we want to attack, and you get the first play and you get the DPI, so you're down and now you're down in that fringe area. You get the next series and you get going, and then you keep going overcome penalties. And what happens is you get way behind the sticks, and so then it gets you your adjustments there. And so we picked it up, and it was unfortunate we had overcome the penalties and the uh, obviously the turnovers, which led let us behind. And then in the last series, you're in two minutes. And so it was not, um, I mean, as you guys know, and obviously evidenced by how many times Derek touches the ball and has for this year, you go back and you get into to what you want to do to start the second half. It just, we put ourselves in a hole too much in the first half. And you go back, and I, like I do every week, and you evaluate, OK, this comes up again. Let's do this. So and that's what happens in the, in the game plan that way. And then obviously, you adapt after that. Your offense has been second in the NFL in the drives of 85 yards or more touchdown wise. How can you get that to happen more? Like, what is the key to having that, that happen for your offense? Well, there's a lot of things that go into it. We, we, we've got to be better uh, fighting against the self inflicted wounds. And I know every team, I mean, things happen in the, in the heat of a play penalties, it's the pre snap penalties. You, you really, you've got to eliminate. we got to eliminate the ones that happen, and don't get me wrong, but those are the ones that you can control more than anything. It's the pre-snap not putting ourselves in a hole. And so there's like, and this is sitting there, it's why you're four and five. You, you've got things going here that are, that are good, and you've got things here that are not so good that we got to correct, and you've got to be objective. And we look at it and try to get those things corrected. What you got to do to win this game on Sunday? I mean, what, what, what's the... What's we got to play more consistent from the, from the start. And, and, and to get out of these ebbs and flows and just to be more consistent. We know it's a, it's a great opportunity on Sunday. It's, 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 they're, they're a great team, the Chiefs, and like every team in the NFL, they get, they're going to present their challenges. But we, we feel good about it, and uh, we need to be more consistent. And then starting from the jump. Any extra pressure are to stay on the field, score, more, score points when you're facing such a – Explosive offense on the other side. Well, that's, that's every week. You go into all three phases, and we obviously, as a team, they, they've done a great job, and uh, we know what they have on the other side. But yeah, sure, you, you want to make sure that's every week. If we can control the ball for a long period of time, you're usually you're going to win. And different ways to do it doesn't mean it's got to be 90 runs, but we got to stay on the ball, be efficient, stay a, and make explosives when they're there, and keep it and try to control the game. Arthur, you mentioned the challenges week to week. Going back to Derrick Henry and the running game, mm -hmm. this Chiefs run front has really clamped down the last two or three weeks. Have you seen that on the film in preparation? Sure. You know, and that's the thing that gets taken sometimes. You look at things on the surface. All right, okay, where are these guys ranked? Who are they playing? And what, how that game went, what their matchups were. And that sometimes, surely, like you're, you're looking for, for matchups and where you think you have an advantage. And as the games go on or they get guys healthy or they move guys around, uh, that's the one thing that you'll see with Jones, 95. He's a great player. He's playing inside, and all of a sudden he comes out last week. You know, the, the injuries they've had it in, and they move him out to, to the tight end. And they, they've hunkered down, and, and it's been different, obviously, too, because they got some games where they had big leads, and so that kind of skews the stats there, right? You're playing somebody, and then they're in a bunch of two minute, and their past stats may skew. But they got a great challenge up front. You like watching Andy Reid and his offense, and maybe you sure. know, taking a couple of things from what he does. And, 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 and the thing is, I, I hate to speak because I don't know Andy Reid. I've just watched him before. When I was a quality control coach with the Redskins, obviously he was with the Eagles and broke down a ton of his film. And, and he's done a great job with with multiple quarterbacks. And he's obviously evolved and adapted to the way his teams of how they're built and how his approach has been. But uh, I'm a huge Andy Reid fan. I think he's been a great coach in the NFL for a long time. You guys seem to be a better offense coming out of halftime than coming out of the preparation weeks. Well, what what leads to that? Well, I think that again, that can be skewed. Um, we got to eliminate the negative plays. So a lot of times you get into them, and this is where the, the biggest issue we got to fix. When we're talking about consistency, is you get into your preparation. But like last week, you get in the second drive, and all of a sudden you're overcoming. Now it's first and twenty-five. Well, you get a positive play. Now it's you know second and twenty-three. And that's the stuff. So then you get into different situations of it, and it kind of throws you back. And then when you get back on track, you're able to get into your plan. And then the biggest thing, and I think this is a huge part of, of the NFL, you got to be able to adapt. You go into halftime. Obviously, you don't want to be stubborn. Like this didn't work. That worked. Now let's make the make some uh, adapt on the sideline. And that happened multiple times. And that's the stuff I believe in. You got to be able to adapt. But. To answer your first question, we got to be better to start and not shoot ourselves in the foot. Why, why do you think, though, the penalties and the stuff that gets you in second and long, third and long, tends to happen early in the first half and then goes away more in the second half? You know, that's a, 
the, the biggest thing you look at it, like how they happen, you know, they're all not the same. And so it's been week to week, whether we got called for a holding or you get called for a procedure penalty. You know, that's, that's another one that goes into the first half that you, you doesn't get talked to. There's two of them, right? You get the explosive run by Derek, it's called back. You get into the one you call, you call a run for him, now you got a false start after an, an explosive play. And that's the stuff we have to eliminate. And so we're working very diligent to make sure it's, it's not just one person. We, and that's the biggest thing I could be accountable for. We've got to be more consistent there from the jump. How often has, have you had to adapt? I mean, is that every game? That you... Sure, you get into it. Uh, you get in the third quarter last, last week. You get into it, and it's, it's just the way it goes. We put ourselves in a hole. So you're in 17-7. And all of a sudden, now you're getting the end of the third quarter, and you're down 17. Same thing happened to us in Jacksonville. So you're going to have to adapt and shift to what you're doing. All right, how many possessions are you going to have left? Do we need to go up tempo? Here's what we're going to do. OK, now how are they playing? Let's throw this wrinkle in there. And that's, that's the constant chess battle you're going to have in between series. For a team that wants to be physical and build sure. off the run game, how difficult has that been when you, when you are having to chase a game like that? Yeah, because now you're getting into a, a lot of obvious past situations. And the thing is that I think you can't lose sight of. You, you still can be physical in the, in the protection game as well. Obviously different. You know, Conventional wisdom is that it's three yards in a cloud of dust, and you're into 22 personnel, and you're pounding away. And it, but there's different ways you can be in, in your spread out run game. You can be in there in protection to be physical. So we try to emphasize that. But, but you're certainly right that you get behind too much, you're going to get in yourself in too many obvious passing situations. I've seen some coaches where they're putting in the game plan like that Saturday night before the game. That's the final time they figure out which sure. plays are in this week or not. How do you go about weeding through that? I mean, do you have a group that you, you speak to? Or like, how do you figure out what plays are the best ones? And at what point what you the think? Last time? Yeah, I think as you go, you get to the end of the, obviously you put the plan in. And then you're going through it, and then as you're as you're preparing during the week, and you, you see something you you may really like, and it's just not clicking somewhere. So you, you it's a fine line of being stubborn to put that put it in. And if you if you don't feel like it's there's a belief in there, or what it, you know, you may say, ah, okay, I'm not gonna be stubborn here, or you may say something you see at the end of the week. Okay, now take a step back. Here's the plan. You go back, try to clear your head, watch certain games. All right, play the game in your head, and that goes all the way up to Saturday night. And I know everybody's different that way, but sure, you take a look at it, and there's a lot of thought that goes into it.